This episode is brought to you by Rad Dudes Who Love Nature. The best part was watching the kids come up. You know, we, we let... It was funny because we're sitting there, you know, we're, we're letting the kids, you know, touch and pet and everything. And, you know, the drugs start to wear off a little bit. And he's kind of, and we're like, oh, we're like, well, we need to end this right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You are listening to Hello and welcome to the Urban Wildlife Podcast. This is one of your co hosts, Dave Crozdale, with your other co host, Dave Brown. And we have a guest with us, Brad Gates. So this is a, I guess the general theme for this episode is in a quests or things we wanted to see in our city finally realized in two different uh, stories. And my side of the story is how we met Brad. So we will get there in a second. So I guess we'll start with the general um the black theme. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. The theme is also black as part of it as well. There are black albums. Black yeah, podcasts. this is the black episode. Um, and always, please rate us highly on your favorite podcasting medium, um, and uh, give us a nice rating, and uh, maybe you know, give us a, a review would be lovely. Um, please uh, email and tweet us at. Or, can email us at. Or wildlife. Cast. Tweet us at Herb Wildlife Cast and email us at urbanwildlifecast at gmail.com and hit us up on Facebook. Alrighty. We're always looking for ideas. So we're back in, this is episode two in the studio, in the the Robeson Library, aka Urban Wildlife Podcast Studio. Um, it still feels so official. I haven't heard any official <laughs> feedback, but I did listen to our, our episode and I do think the sound quality is dramatically improved although the last episode was recorded in the field although i thought it sounded pretty good as well yeah and i think that one um that was the london plane tree episode um where i i grudgingly gained a little bit more respect for london plane trees um and the role in the city i have never i admit that i i am still more of a fan of lots of other kinds of trees i'll put it that way um i've always considered london plane trees to be kind of the default tree in Philadelphia in a way that's kind of unoriginal, but learning more about the history of why that came to be was interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it, I'll watch them more closely. There's a question of bias that comes in here because when we learned that like, uh, the highest value trees for insect life that then would go on to feed other things, you know, further up the food chain or down the food chain that we tend to be more into observing, like, you know, Tony's a birder, I am a budding birder, um, I like lots of other things that eat bugs, uh, bass, you name it. And so you know that like oak trees, you know, tend to, to, to support a, a lot of, um, what do you call it, bug biomass, you know? Yes. And then you pointed out that black cherry trees do the same. I think oaks as a genera <clears throat> have the most, but in, as an individual tree, it's black cherry. But then like, so then I find myself looking more at those trees when I'm birding, um, and then seeing lots of, let's say, in the spring and the fall, a lot of warblers moving through and, like, just totally going over, like, Willow Oaks and Independence National Historic Park or something like that, um, and not spending much time in the plane trees. Uh, and so it's sort of, but I also, am I just not looking at the plane trees as much? And because uh, I, in my head, know they don't have as many bugs. Yeah, my um, experience, personal experience would concur with you. Oh, there you go. That they, <laughs> they tend to prefer oaks and cherries and other things. Uh, although I have seen some really cool things, like I've seen cedar waxwings feeding in London Plains. And I was noticing this this spring again that uh, Baltimore Orioles seem to love the, to pick yeah. apart the seed balls of the London plane trees. So if it's if you're if you're spring bird watching around Philadelphia and you, you're standing next to a London plane tree, there's like a snow of like the fluffy Seeds coming down on you, look up, you might see an Oriole. And that'd be interesting to see if they're feeding on the seeds or picking apart for things in the seeds. Yeah. And I, I, I think the other element of it, though, that I, I think is, is worth remembering when we talk about urban wildlife and, and whatnot is the is the historical and human um, choices that lead to the to the the sort of biotic communities we have around us in cities. Um, that, you know, when you think about, on the one hand, like when, when you take most ecology classes, like the first thing you learn about is like the geology, right? 
Um, you learn about what kind of rocks are underneath and like what geological processes led to the soil that's there and then supports you know, soil types. layers and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And supports yeah. like what kind of plant communities based on the geology and combine with the weather. And then in the city though, um, you're dealing with artificial geology in a sense of, of concrete asphalt and their, what they degrade into. Um, and then you're dealing with sort of carefully selected tree canopy. Um, we hear a, a <laughs> yeah, there's not a, there's not a captive urban wildlife. Yeah. Away. There is not a, um, <laughs> piece of equipment or something that kicked on. Um, my cat has jumped on my lap and wants to get on the table, um, <laughs> where we're recording. I always like to point out those of us who, who know how strongly Tony and I feel about outdoor cats. Um, I don't feel good about them. Uh, no. Tony adores cats. An example of that is Shamu, who he can't keep his hands off. It isn't like, I would have just been like, like kick the cat off of me. Tony's got to snuggle for a minute. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and it's a, that you cat. You love is, cats. It's all good. That cat's a living teddy bear. Yeah. Like it's literally like if a that stuff that don't came to life, it'd be that cat. You know. But so we were on a big segue. Um, so that's what the last episode was about. Um, what I was what spurred me to get in touch with Tony wasn't his adventure with the black bear, which we'll get to, um, but is that I finally found a black rat snake in the city of Philadelphia. Um, and so this is gonna maybe be me monologuing for a little bit, but you guys ask questions and, and break in with your rat snake experiences. But, um, you know, when you're a little kid- well, well, Go ahead. Okay. For um, Brad's sake, Billy and I are obsessed with within the city limits of Philadelphia. Gotcha. Right, so like, um, we want to see things within our city limits, like more than anything else. Now we are, we, we are in a mm -hmm. massive metropolitan area, and in a lot of ways, cities are defined throughout the world. Seeing a black rat snake and like, it, yeah, would still count. or even like much for you know, thirty miles from here in like you know Salem County, New Jersey, would people still think of that as Philadelphia? Oh, Salem is like a land of black rat snakes, but yeah. yeah but you go over Jersey, like I was telling you, because <laughs> uh, like I said, we run beagles in the spring and the baby rabbits, and uh, there's rat snakes everywhere. Not my favorite snake, but I like the rabbits, but well, well, I appreciate them. <laughs> yeah. But so, so, but it, however arbitrarily we choose our, our hunting grounds, um, you know, for Tony and I, a lot of that is within the city of Philadelphia. Um, and I'm someone who likes going out um, into the woods and marshes, mountains, forests, whatever, and looking for reptiles and amphibians. People go birding, we call it herping. Herping, yeah. Um, yep. And so- A lot of friends at herp. Yep. There you go. In and easy. <laughs> Herb and Amy's Herb and Amy's. Uh, so, um, and I, I love finding black rat snakes. They have personality. Yeah. Um, they're relatively easy to pick up. Yeah. They're arbor semi arboreal, so. Um, they look meaner than they are. They look meaner than they are, but it's fun to contrast them with black racers that people sometimes lump together because they look kind of similar as just black snakes. But black racers are very much um, uh, not, well, they get there a little bit. They're mostly on the ground, they're not so arboreal, they're not so good at climbing. Um, so a black rat snake, um, you can often pick it up and it'll, once it realizes you're not trying to eat it, will calm down a bit. Um, a racer does not want to be off the ground. It will keep chewing on you and trying to draw as much blood as possible until you put it down. It's a different experience. Our real good buddy, Mike McGraw, is a herpetologist by trade and he did, the, you know, he works with pine snakes, which are notoriously docile. They make a lot of noise. Right, but they don't bite much. And so yeah. I'm out with him and, you know, he had me pick up a whole lot of pine snakes, no problem. Flip a board as a racer, and I was like, "Can I can I pick this one up?" And he's like, "Absolutely." <laughs> yeah, he set you up. <laughs> and it's like, it, it, yeah, I mean, and to him, it's like, yeah, you can pick it up, but it's like it'll bite you, but it's no big deal. So, yeah. But I like black rat snakes because they kind of the head has that python type shape, you a know, more of a triangular shape to it, yeah, an arrowhead kind of shape to it, and, yeah. they, and their eyes bug out a little bit, which can give them a little bit of a, a quizzical look. Racers yeah. have like a scale above their eye that gives them like an angry eyebrow look. So that's again, this is very much anthropomorphism. We're judging by the scale, how the scales are of a snake. But in any case, I love black rat snakes. I love finding them wherever I am. Um, and if you'd asked me six years ago, I would have said there are basically no black rat snakes in the city limits of Philadelphia. I would have said there's, it's, there's, they don't deal well with crossing roads. Um, adult black rat snakes actually use a large amount of territory. They cover a lot of ground. Um, and, All those rabbits they gotta eat. Well, excuse me. They'll eat anything <laughs> warm-blooded that's small enough. So they'll eat birds. Um, when they're babies, they'll probably eat lizards and frogs and stuff too. But 
um, mostly they're eating birds or mammals of the right size for them. So that might mean uh, when they're babies, it might be baby mice. Um, if you get a seven footer adult, um, then yeah, they're taking down squirrels and chipmunks and rabbits and stuff and, and whatever birds they can grab. Uh, and so they're, um, so the combination of kind of the territory they need and just that they're, 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 one of their basic fear reactions is to freeze up and like they have this like kind of kinked look like they're trying to like blend in with leaves on the forest floor but if you do that on the road you're dead um so they're terrible at crossing roads uh and so what i said yeah they they might you know maybe wash over from palmyra cove you know in like a natural area in jersey or something but they're not living in philadelphia and then and then i was in the school kill center looking for milk snakes which are there um, for a program i was doing uh, and there's a power line cut um that's sort of in the back of the school kill center grounds. And I saw a black rat snake scoot away into some uh, piles of stone I couldn't get into. Um, and it just sort of blew my mind. I was like, wait a second. And I started talking to old timers um, who were who were like, oh yeah, we see them down by this wall over there, you know, and I, I just had always discounted it. And then I started getting more and more reports. And so I think that part of this is also a feature of our current era where it's really easy for people to take pictures with their phones and share them. Um, yeah, I saw a lot with the bear, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so so you so all of a sudden someone who was who you know ten years ago had been like, eh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He saw a big garter snake, and now he's he's magnifying it in his brain, you know, um, which happens. Uh, but now you can see people's pictures of like, no, no, it's a rat snake, and they'll show it to you in their phone, and you, you can't argue with that. Um, and then they were, you know, I've heard reports from Barsham's Garden, um, and then reports popping up, especially on the Delaware waterfront. So more and more, I started dedicating myself to like going on trips to find rat snakes. Um, I counted it. And so starting in like late 2014, late summer 2014, I went on, at least that I had written down 39 trips to try to find rat snakes. And this includes like, we'll call them like family picnics or walks when like, it's like, where should we go for a picnic? And I'm like, well, we should go to Glen Ford on the Delaware because I just got a rat snake report from there. You know? um, and, and so for counting those, you know, getting out there um, on my 39th trip, uh, I was at um, Penny Pack on the Delaware, um, which is a place where I had first learned about them because they were in the prison garden, which is right next to Penny Pack on the Delaware. Um, and then our good friend John Jensen, who's uh, a, a steward, land stewardship guy with Riverfront North, uh, trip number 39, uh, I just sort of basically walked into the woods um, at Penny Pack in the Delaware and like like three steps into the woods, there was one stretched out and I sort of picked it up and um, and then like t half an hour later, I found another one, um, just like for the right morning. And the trip before, I had shown up um, with Magnolia, my seven-year-old. I had my uh, Gilda, who at that point was like three months old. Um, like slung on my chest and I saw John Jensen and he was like, oh, you're here at the right time. I just saw two of them. And I was like, awesome. And then like we spent two and a half hours not finding yeah. anything and pissing <laughs> off my daughter. Um, and then, so in this trip, I, I was like, like just steps into the woods and ran into one. Um, and so I, I, I texted John, I was like, I don't know how to feel. Like <laughs> since 2014, I've been structuring my outings around Philadelphia with this goal in mind. And I'm like, not quite sure like, what do I do now? <laughs> like, you can look for other things. Like, maybe I'll look for more, try to find more red salamanders around Philadelphia or something. <laughs> um, but, like... I always say I'm um, under the black construction barriers for er uh, for erosion. Yeah, and, and... You can find stuff under there. Yeah, and I, that's, I see them all, all spring, all the time, this Wait, time of year. red salamanders? No, 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 the black rat snakes. Ah, uh, okay. You know, you pick up... I love picking up things, and it's just see the construction... Black, you pick them up and they're always coiled under there. there so, go. but we need to place a couple in strategic spots. And <laughs> <laughs> well, now I found my Philadelphia black rat snake. Yep, there we go. Um, and I and I have a friend who was finding them just basically once they work. It's kind of secret kind of thing, but like just over the line in the surrounding county. And I was like, Dave, this is awesome, but it doesn't quite count. And then I wanted to find one myself, and I need to give proper um, uh, thanks to McGraw, who um, who found a. A pretty young one um, along the Delaware River, and honestly, like called me and then sat there watching it um, until I could drive out <laughs> and <laughs> see cool. it. Well, it's deal with racers in Philly. Racers pop up also. Jensen, John Jensen has a picture of one from 
Philly Peck and the Delaware also. No, have you seen Ray Sherman Philly? I have not. But it's not a why why is that not a white whale? Like I just the, love rat snakes in the way I don't love racers. Yeah. I like racers, I'll be happy to see one, but I don't know if I'm going to launch like a series of trips to find them. And also, like frankly, I could see them in a lot of the places I was looking for rats. If they're racers, they should be in um, racers. Like maybe like slightly more open country. Um, was that a racer or was that a? The picture you showed me was a yeah. rat snake. For it, sure. Well, okay. okay. Um, yeah. No, the, the racers. Um, so I know that, so the, I know they're around the Penny Pack, or at least the Delaware waterfront up there. I'm not sure if they go up the Penny Pack or just like along the river. Um, and then I know that they're uh, near FDR Park. Like so people have seen them down around there. So that's in South, clear other side of the city. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, and someone who saw one there saw a baby, um, which years ago. But a baby means they're breeding. They're like babies don't oh, wander mm -hmm. long distances. The adults do. Um, and then uh, George, this is named George. Um, the fellow uh, at, uh, at Cobbs Creek. Yeah, George Ambrose. He claims he saw a black racer years ago in Cobbs Creek. Um, which, you know, frankly, when you look at the map, if they're around um, FTR Park in South Philly, uh, you look at how the train tracks go and everything, that's like in their creek quarters. It's not uh, is it yeah. reasonable to see those connecting, you know? Um, and I know that there are, I don't know if they're at Heinz. Um, the, the Heinz Wildlife Refuge tend to come near the airport. Well, their cobs should be at Heinz and vice versa. I know, I know. But their racers are an obvious creature in a way. Like, so are rat snakes, but like, they, they're, they're diurnal, they're out during the daytime, um, and they're active. So you'll, and, and they're easy to find under stuff. Rat snakes are harder to, generally harder to find under boards and stuff than racers. Um, and so uh, if you're out flipping boards um, and there are racers around, you'll find racers. Um, in any case, so that uh, so it got me thinking also just about this overall topic of these quests. Like I like to point out that in two thousand five, it was two thousand four. I found um, a milk snake, which is another. Um, so rat snakes can get big. Rat snakes can get up to like it's record size, like around eight feet. Um, average size, I think, like four feet, four to six feet. Um, and then big ones, I, I do catch big ones that are in the six to seven foot range. Um, I don't know fun. Uh, <laughs> and the, uh, uh, milk snakes are more like three foot snakes. Um, and, uh, a lot of differences. I won't get into the differences so much, but I found a milk snake in the Wissahickon in like 2005, um, in the spring. And I thought I would find more cause I, I hadn't really looked that hard. And then I just kept looking and going back and looking and looking around Northwest Philadelphia and didn't find another one for 10 years. Wow. Um, I was out like, on a hike on my birthday with Magnolia and Gigi, and like I fell on a rock, and I was like dancing around. <laughs> um, but so that was like quest number one, and then quest number two is the rat snakes. And so like, do you ever, I mean, you with the birding, is there stuff, we'll get to the bears, but is there stuff that you like wanted to find in your yard that even though you saw it out like in other places, you, you, you really wanted to see, get a sight of it like, in yeah, your limits or in your neighborhood. That's like my one list I really care about is my Philadelphia list. So, you know, I, I'll, unfortunately, with what birds, have you seen on your list in Philly? My list is like, or or what do you still have to see? That I mean, there's there's quite a bit. I mean, the list for Philly is like over is like three hundred twenty some some birds. Is it total seen or total you've seen? Total ever seen in Philadelphia on record is like over three hundred fifteen species. Um, on eBird, I'm sixth for Philadelphia. Oh, nice. It's 265, I think. Um, so there's still quite a few. Um, but some of that stuff is something that's shown up once. Right. You know, right, right, right. like, um, or you, you only get a record of it every year. So it's a matter of luck. And, I, I, and the downside of birding is also the upside in, in that the upside is that there's tons of birders and generally... If something sh you know will show up and it'll get reported and I'll go follow up on it. The downside is that it doesn't leave that many opportunities for me just to happen upon things myself. Yeah. And you know one of those was like I got my own blue gross beak. I didn't follow up on a report. I was just uh, out birding with Dan, and we were. That's um, a fantastic looking little bird. So talk I, about it was a female or immature, but still. Okay. I mean they're now they're now probably breeding in Philly. It looks like they've. Uh, maybe another product of, of global warming. You know, they're a southern uh, species moving up. But uh, but these are, the males are like a, what do you call it, iridescent or like bright. Yeah. Or deep blue um, and gross beak. I mean, cardinals are gross beaks. They have big, mm. 
biggest crushing beaks. Well, the, 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 bee, the bee really nerdy about the taxonomy, gross beaks are cardinals. Well, okay. So the, these ones are the, the things, evening gross beaks are um, a finch. And in this country, uh, and, and pine gross beaks are a finch. And, and everything else needs a gross beak in. Rosy gross is a gross breast gross beak, um, black headed gross beak, um, and um, blue gross beak are actually cardinals. Oh, so, 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 so is um, indigo bunny, which is it looks like a mini blue, 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 blue gross beak. the tanager, the scarlet tanagers are now so the tanagers are what we call tanagers in North America are all cardinals, well, and as well as the dick thistle. Which is it looks like kind it's of like a Western grassland bird. It's a it's, it's a tall grass prairie specialist. Okay, yeah. there you go. So, but blue gross beaks, a uh, very vivid blue bird with a freakishly large beak. Looks like a kind of like a almost like a not hooked, but almost like a parrot's beak got grafted onto a small yeah. bird. So that was you know that was exciting and like you know I mean I was I followed up on the a white winged tern which is only like the fourth or fifth record for North America. I mean and I found um, Townsend's warbler. You know, that's the one that sort of showed up at the yeah, center. So, yeah. But yeah, I have lots more still. Um, but for me personally, a thing I've always wanted to see in the city of Philadelphia was a black bear. <laughs> <laughs> and you talked about this in early episodes where you talked about like wanting to buy a place next to railroad tracks because you felt like that would be the best opportunity to see a black bear using railroad tracks as a corridor. Well, that was before I married a lawyer who upped my... Um, prospects for type of home I could afford <laughs> uh, or just married in general right you, you, don't, have, you don't have to be woken up by trains every night is yeah, what you're saying my now. single <laughs> single Tony version of of like house would be like buying like a $80,000 house in West Philly next to railroad tracks or something right yeah. like um, but I uh, I'm married so my, nothing wrong with that yeah and, uh, and I married someone who makes a bit more money than I do um, so the instead of buying a house next to all tracks, I bought a house next to 1,900 acres of forest, and another sort of corridor. Yeah, <laughs> and we're and we're three house. We're the third house in from a stream, which is an, a corridor. Like you can't not beat it in not, Philadelphia. Yeah. not the no. main no. branch that was taken, but a, a, a tributary of, mm -hmm. and this bear very likely followed that. And we'll, we'll so, th and this is how we met Brad. So I'll so this is really Brad's story because I basically just showed up. Um, but we can At the say, end. talk generally about bears and like it seems right. like this last year another one showed up. Yeah, what yeah, what's going on is uh th this time of year, uh every year a bears breed in June. Uh, that's their rut mating season and uh a sow will have her cubs with her for 2 years. So her second June is when she kicks her cubs away. It's time for them to move on. She will rebreed. So the those bears have to go find their own territory. And that was a young male. And what, what they do is they have to get out of the territory of another larger male, especially if his mother's getting ready to breed, because the other boar coming in will kill that her cub. And that triggers them to go into cycle. That's a whole nother thing. But uh, so he was just roaming. He was roaming and, and looking for his own. And just like corridors, like train tracks, like you were saying, is you have, you know, the Delaware River, the Schuylkill River. I mean, that they hit it. This is the second time it's happened in three years. And it's going to happen more, but that's kind of... The... So we didn't introduce you fully. Who oh. are you that you should know so much about this? Oh, okay. Yeah. My name is Brad Gates. <laughs> I've, I grew up in this area uh, since I was two years old on this street that we're doing the podcast from, believe it or not. Um, he lives on the next block over. <laughs> so I grew up in this area. I love wild places and wild critters. And as a little kid, I would just come home from school, Shawmont, right down the road here, and I would run these rivers and woods and just catch snakes and, you know, whatever I could find. Um, growing up, I was so fascinated with the wildlife. I went to Penn State and I have a degree in wildlife fisheries biology. Um, so basically in this area, I do a lot of uh, volunteer type stuff. I'm a co-founder of Delaware Valley Wildlife Management. I'm on the board of uh, the Deer Committee for Friends of Wissahickon. Um, and basically what I do with the Game Commission, I'm volunteer, and there's any nuisance problems with larger animals, and they're either busy 
or there's a deer stuck on the fence or uh, something. Which is a kind of a gruesome situation. Yeah, no, that's not fun. Where they've got a hot jump of fence, but something's yeah, sharp yeah, yeah, And yeah. there's just a lot of fences here, a lot of deer, but yeah. whatnot. But uh, I get called in on a volunteer basis to give the guys a hand when there's an issue that they just need uh, some extra eyes, ears, feet, legs, hands, whatever. So I heard about this bear shows up in East Falls, which is um, um, Philadelphia is kind of shaped like a Y. But wait, last year when the bear showed up, weren't you out of town or something? It was two years ago. I two think years it was two ago. years ago, and I was doing, doing the World Series of Birding. Right. I was doing so. the World Series of Birding, and uh, <laughs> he was bathing down in front of Valley Green. Yeah. Right. It was, yeah. it and, was your stomping which grounds, right, and, it was, yeah. and you weren't here. And, and that's when I was still stationed at this park. Now I'm in a different park. You know, I mean, I still work for the whole park system, but I... And my office is no longer in this park. It's in the other, my Cops Creek Park. Two years ago, I was in this park, but I was away. Yeah. The bear shows up, and Jerry Check, Officer Check, who we had on the podcast before, well, well, again, he did a, a quick one with the eagle. Remember, we told the whole story about the eagle? Yeah, you recorded him while you were driving. Yeah, okay, but good. we're going to actually have him in one of these days. So he calls me to. to um, good friend of mine. Uh, well, like yeah. Him, yeah. <laughs> he, he called me and was like, he wanted to use. The, our gator, our you know, all-wheel drive utility um, vehicle, uh, it, it always makes me angry. People are like, oh, Tony, it's only that golf cart. I'm like, it's not a golf cart. <laughs> the special forces fly these things into you. Man. <laughs> it's a real burly vehicle. Um, he went to, to go, you know, look for via the gator. And so when this happened, I was like, well, I'm coming back up and I'm grabbing the gator from Wissa Higgin and we're going to go find it. And and I kept texting Jerry, he, you know, didn't respond. And I was like, oh, he must be really busy. And so I came up and I just went. He wasn't, but go ahead. Well, <laughs> he was on vacation. Exactly. So, <laughs> That's um, busy. So, right. Yeah, he was. That's how he I was, got yeah. involved. Well, in my, my head, I thought he was busy. He, he probably would have responded and been like, get the gator. But he was, you know, he was uh, not there. He was, so he, his phone was off or whatever. So I'm up there. Um, we'll see him the first day in. East Falls and they tried. This, this, this is the recent bear. Yeah, this is the recent bear. Yeah. The, so in, in our Facebook, the, the Facebook account, et cetera, for our worlds are blowing up because everybody's yeah. going crazy about this. And <laughs> I, I wasn't in a position to um, come up and, and help look or anything. And at that point, it wasn't even in the park yet. It was just on train tracks in East yeah. Falls. And so Philadelphia is shaped like a Y. And one of the parts of the, 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 the Y, the top, the Y is north and the bottom of the Y south. And, so the there is a portion of the Y that's the northwest section. That's the section we're in. It's the most yeah. um, suburban, even though it's in the city. It's single Boy, houses yeah. and, and a massive park and a big piece of private nature, you know, a nature center and um, canals. It's it's a great place, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, but this is the bottom of that part. So the bear had to make it quite a ways through, at least like eight miles through the city. Yeah. You know, um, and it, and it probably ran out of woods, you know, and it yeah. was seen and trying to get it. He was just searching for a home. Yep, yeah. Yep. And I was, so I didn't go all that day. The next day, it's, the bear shows up on my street. And <laughs> and I actually had business that wasn't taken that day. So I'm like, I'm coming back. So I hop in an Uber and I come home and I grab my gear, my bear spray, you know, the whole nine. Mostly because people, I don't, I don't expect to actually use, deploy the bear spray, but people are going to. If you've got bear spray. Bring yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I actually believe how it or not, often do you get to actually have it on you when I, there's a bear? If you, you saw the news clip where the bear stood up and I jumped in the woods to stop the bear from going towards uh, Ridge Avenue, if you look at my left hand, I had yeah. bear spray. I uh, actually, I was crazy, but not a hundred percent crazy. Believe it or not, <laughs> I actually keep bear spray in my bag usually, because uh, I work in a I, in a place where there's feral dogs sometimes. That's true. And That's with true. little children. No, I've been jumped you know? by, by pit bulls in yeah. Mount Moriah Cemetery, which is right near there. Yeah, area. and, you know, I I may have to, like, defend a fourth grader from a rogue Wattweiler. It's not, yeah. I mean, I've it's been in the, it I've had fourth possible. graders in yeah. the park with a loose Rottweiler before. Like, literally that happened. Oh, yeah, I believe you. So, um, and, I'm, you know, nothing against Rottweilers. I love them. But, you know, I... It's not like a, it's not Jack Russell players. Terrier that yeah. I can just kick off, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so I went out and I noticed that the helicopters were in one area. So these uh, news so, helicopters? Yeah. Hmm? News, helicopters? news helicopters. And probably, yeah, two of them. Yep. But the 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 bear was recited at the apartment complex on on Henry Avenue, which abuts the park. And by trigger the way the park works, my street works, I actually can take a trail right from my house to that 
back in the apartment center, so I figured okay. the bear, good chance the bear is back there. Um, but apparently it wasn't. So what <laughs> happened was so the, the stream goes behind the, the complex, past my house, so the bear must have followed that up. And so there was literally a sighting on my street, depending on which way the bear took it, could have actually walked on my sidewalk. And so I'm, <laughs> but then I see on Twitter um, that the bear had, because actually was following bear, uh, Philly bear. <laughs> on Twitter, and, appa- and the bear, they said they, they hit it with a dart. So I was like, "All right, well, I'm not gonna get to see the bear now." So I went and dropped the stuff off. I had to do with the wizard again. But that hadn't happened yet. Well, it, it, it was it was I guess it wrote us to be reported on Twitter, yeah. uh, and then so we we um, there with my buddy Dan, who we always talk about, was invited to come tonight. Declined. We'll get him on the podcast eventually. We came out. We came Dan, back. Which Dan? Ephraimson. Oh yeah, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, he lived very close. He said he was. Tired for doing yard work, so. But okay. I'd love to have him over. Um, he's an opportunity. He's actually there for this to have him on the podcast. We'll you know, he was bench. with us when we were recording that Peregrine Falcon episode, but he didn't say anything. Yeah, he's very reserved. He's, you hear him in the background saying, asking people if they want to look at the Falcons through the scope. That's yeah. as much as he's on the podcast. Yeah. But he's not here so we can embarrass him. He's he's just the nicest human being in the world. He's a really nice guy. Very yeah. handsome and and uh, so quiet that he doesn't. He deprives ladies of his company. And we need to. So any single ladies in Philadelphia want a very handsome um, guy who knows man. this plant's cold. Yeah, he's. <laughs> but in any case. So anyway, so um, you and Dan. I I but looking at Twitter and news footage, I figure out where the bear is, and it's it was it was the choppers didn't give it away. Well, <laughs> I couldn't pinpoint because you know they weren't right above there. No, I know. I'm so good. they weren't. So I figured like. I'm like, I had an idea where it was. I'm like, so I knew where, I was like, it had to be on, 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 on a certain road and it happened to be next to um, this retirement community. So it has to be there. So we drove down there and I, you know, I'm in my park gear and I'm um, texting Jared. I'm like, I'm on site. Do you need the gator? Do you need anything else? What do you need? And no answer. No answer. So I just, I'm just going to watch this unfold. And I don't want to approach the officers and interject myself, but I keep seeing this guy walking back and forth. He looks like he's part of the operation. He wasn't in uniform. Had the same binocular harness that I had on. Koyu. Very cool company. Um, and I'm like... This guy Instant knows, connection. This guy knows what's up. And But I didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to talk to him until basically everything was winding down. And the, the, I never... A need, a need never arose from or couldn't communicate. Although, you probably could have used the gator to get the bear to the truck because it was when you finally got it. But anyway, there's no need for me. I just deserve her. But after it's all said and done, I, I mean, Brad realizes my neighbor, he was involved with the whole thing, and I'm like, we're going to get you on the podcast. So, you were involved in the whole thing, so why don't Did you tell you the story? you selfie of yourself by the truck with the bear? I got a selfie with the, with the bear in the, in the, yeah, once it was sedated. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, I never got this, I never got to see the bear unrestrained. Okay. Walking freely. So, how do you count it to see a bear in Philadelphia or not? I mean, I, I saw a bear in Philadelphia, but... I didn't see it like no, walking past. the question of a density. He was just area. sleeping. When yeah. you saw him, he was sleeping. Yeah, but that you, you, it's hard to be the first one with your eyes on something, especially a big and obvious creature like a bear. Like, it isn't like you're going to stumble upon... It, it's unlikely that you're going to stumble upon a bear in anywhere in Philadelphia and be the first person in Philadelphia who saw it. Yeah, and then yeah. anyone who sees a bear in Philadelphia is going to be, like, taking a picture of the yeah, phone yeah. and, like, lighting up the news yeah. with it. But I think I'm the first person to put it in a naturalist. That might be the case. Although Chrissy from my colleague at the was taken, uh, put its um, a pile of its crap on a naturalist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, and it, it was a big mound of, of of crap full of black cherry pits. Well, that's what I would be eating. Yeah. So that a raccoon. All right. So let's let's talk about how you fit into all this. Okay. So what happened is, like I said, I help out with some uh, large animal problems. But anyway. I came home from work and it was a Thursday afternoon. Uh, choppers are hovering. I don't know what's going on. I'm exhausted. It's about 2.30. I got home early. I said, I'm going to lay down and watch some TV. So my daughter texts me and said, Dad, there's a bear running around. My daughter, Nicole, <laughs> there's a bear running around the neighborhood. Go check on the chickens and the dogs. So I start laughing. So now I know what's going on. I called Jerry on the phone. Jerry, check. I said, Jerry, I said, will you guys please catch the bear? I'm trying to take a nap. That's how, and he starts laughing. He goes, I'm on the beach in Maryland. I'm like, I'm like, wait, I said, who's running this whole operation? He goes, there's another officer, Tyler from up north. I'm not sure which county. I said, listen, I said, do you want me to get the dogs and go over and end this thing and catch this bear? He goes, would you please go over there and help? 
and he's used, I'm gonna call Tyler. Another side item of mine is I have uh, tracking dogs. Um, I have a Dotson and I have a Bloodhound and I can pretty much get them to track, you know, deer, raccoon or whatever. You There's show them the scent. There's something adorable about the idea of a Dachshund. The funny thing there. is it was, I was, he's <laughs> the most vicious out of all my dogs <laughs> and he's about 16 pounds and he would have went toe to toe. So I drove over there. They let me in the barricades. Tyler walks over. He says, listen, Brad, don't put the dogs out. And I agree. Too many people, you know. I was there and I was like, they need dogs. They, they, they were in the back of my truck. Did you see? Yeah. They were in the back I, of my I truck. Noticed, but I was like, if there was dogs, this, they would have had their treat yeah. and found it in a, in a I second. had them with the GPS collars. I was ready to go. But, you know, we just decided wrong time and place and too many people. You know, it's just louder than it is unsafe or hurt the bear. It just sounds worse. Yeah. But anyway, so. He goes, this thing is over. I got a trap coming. I'm going to set it in the woods. I said, listen, I said, give me a half hour. He goes, what? I said, just give me a half hour. I said, if that bear's in that woodlot, I'll either know he's in a woodlot or I'm going to find him. So he kind of looked at me. So he goes, okay. So I know the terrain back there. There's a couple holes in the fence that go from the woodlot to the senior field. No tracks. Deer, deer were all scared out of the woodlot. No bear. Check some of the yards, no bear. I said, okay, he's in here. So I just took my time with my binoculars and my QU uh, little fancy thing <laughs> and just started pretending I was just still hunting and, you know, stalking and glassing and whatnot. And I saw uh, uh, some grapevines just bowed over and I figure he's going to be hot and scared and, and trying to hide. And I'm kind of looking in there and it's dark and black in there, but I see something that looks even more black. Yeah. So I pulled the binoculars up and he picks his head up and looks at me. I'm like... I got you. <laughs> so I called Tyler. I said, Tyler, get up here with the trank gun. I said, you know, try to leave the people behind, which was impossible. You saw that. So he comes down. We come into the woods. We could not get a clear shot with the trank gun. Uh, we're moving around trying to find a hole. He gets up. He runs. He runs up, runs across Cathedral Road behind um, Cathedral Village, the old age home. Huh. And, he, and he hits the chain link fence. And I've never seen a bear. Well, other people said he never even slowed down. He hit that 10 foot fence, went up and over that quick. We jump in the car, we head down there. Now you gotta remember, I, I grew up in this, this area neighborhood. I know every square inch of the woods, everywhere, anyway. I know every hole in the fence. So I turned around, I said, everybody just stay here. Just leave me alone. Have your phone ready. I'll find a bear. I jumped the fence, go down the retention basin. It was a retention basin. So there's a water line with the creek. So I just hit it, paralleled it, found his tracks, three holes in the upper fence, found he went through the third hole. As I crest over, there's two guys down on the bottom road that were working at Cathedral Village. They saw the bear jump the fence. They drove their truck around. They're sitting there. I look at them. I pull my binoculars up. The bear's laying in the creek, curled up sleeping, drinking water. You know, he's scared and tired. So I call Tyler. Tyler comes back around, comes down the road. That's when we get Something the first, shot. yeah, we get the first start in him. That's where it gets Western. <laughs> it takes 15 minutes for a tranquilizer to work on an animal. And usually when an animal's, uh, the adrenaline's flowing like that, it, it takes longer. You know, they're just so hepped up and just wired. So we're sitting there. I saw the bushes move. Tyler's here. We're watching. It's kind of dark and thick. You can't see real well. We wait 15 minutes. We get down there. He's gone. He's not there. We're like, where'd he go? So we look for an hour can't find him you know he's tranquilized so he's just sleeping somewhere we can't find him so he either a got up around me went back in that retention basin and would or there was a sewer line he went in the sewer line turned left and came out because we got back out on manitowana so a big, a, a so there's big storm concrete. Sewer uh, yeah, it, yeah, it was so uh, if, storm drains, right, storm if lines. This, yeah, you're, if you're around um, a, a, a creek in Philadelphia, the river in Philadelphia, you'll see these giant culverts that empty. Exactly out what it is. Yeah. So he either went in there, and that, and all of those pipes go up underneath Cathedral Village. And I looked at yeah. Tyler. He goes, "There's nothing we can do. He's just, you know, going to sleep, wake up, and come out." Yeah. So Tyler's doing a closing interview with the, with the. TV stations. I look up Manitowana. I'm standing. That's kind of on the road that I met you and you and I started talking. I look up and some girls frantically pointing in a field. <laughs> so 
that's when I blew by everybody, ran up the hill. Tyler stops the interview, follows me. We run up, and that's the part of the news where you see the bear stay in the field. I run in and just – because I wanted to cut him off so he didn't go towards Ridge Avenue. Yeah. So this is a thoroughfare. Yeah, you know, we're talking – it, this is a – this part of Philadelphia is mind-blowing <laughs> because you're talking about cricks and, and hollows and, and woods, but it's still Philadelphia. It's yeah. surrounded by – Relatively closely packed in single family homes and apartment yeah. complexes. Yeah. And, and, and Bridge Avenue is a, a thoroughfare. A with business district. Businesses. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as we're doing all this, I'm looking up and seeing people up on their balconies and out their windows right, watching right, us. Right. And, so, you know. and there's a mall right there, too. <laughs> so when you think about getting also from point A to point B, you might be going through backyards, fences, mm -hmm. more streets, another set of backyards. So it's, it's like a... So it isn't so simple to follow a bear in a straight line. Right, yeah. right. And and my advantage was I, I kind of tend to know how animals want to move and maneuver and yeah. their habits. And I know the woods. So and I knew, you know, he's he's not, you know, and he does it. It's amazing to me how animals can navigate in woods they've never been in. He's never been there in his life. How did he? It's amazing how he ran across the parking lot, jumped, walked across the stream there's only three holes in the fence and there was no waiver and he was not looking. He went through one of the holes, went to the creek and curled up. It seemed like he knew it, but they know he didn't, but he was just avoiding certain things and navigating certain places. It was really interesting. It is. Yeah. It's very interesting. I never heard anybody put it like that. How does this animal know where to go? And woods has never been in. Sixth Sense. I mean, we hear well, that in the, in the outdoor woods. Well, but, Things you can't explain. I don't. I'll put forth a, 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 another hypothesis, which is that there's only so many holes in the fence. More than one animal is using those holes in the fence. And right. I'm going to guess the bear could be following other game trails or other. Oh, set, actually, there were, there, was, there were three. Of, yeah, there were three decisive. Yeah, those, there were three decisive right. trails going up the hill that led him out of that retention basin yeah, in the yeah. hole. Yeah. So, so from yeah. Bear's perspective, but what I'm saying is, everywhere. he knew, you know, how did he, you know, he ran between in an alleyway for three, four hundred yards, didn't veer left or right, just headed straight for the woods. Just, yeah. you know, if he went right, he was in trouble. Left, he was in big trouble. He just went straight, and there weren't smell any <laughs> any barriers that would prevent him from going any way. He just went the right way. Well, <laughs> Interesting. So, so the next step is he's tranquilized. Okay, we got one dart in him. The girl saw him. I ran up, waved, and, and we turned the bear back around. And it's kind of a long, thin strip with a high fence up in the retention basin. I called Tyler. I said, Tyler, get, get up to the fence. Just sit down. He's got to come that way, which he did. He came down, and we got another dart in his hind quarter. And, and that pretty much did it, you know. So. And then... They put him in a truck and they take him upstate. Somewhere? Yeah, what would yeah? So he came up over and he was actually coming at me. I turned. It still takes time for him to fall asleep. So I'm sitting. I had my bear spray in my hand. I had no intention <laughs> of using it. Guess there, there's a distance I was allowing this to happen. He was about 15 feet, but he was staggering pretty good. He was looking back at me and him, and he just kind of curled up like a dog and just spread his arms out and just was snoring. So and then we just yeah took him up to the big trap that you saw and put him in there and. uh we put Vaseline on his eyes so because they don't blink much. So they don't, you know, we kept checking his gums. He was healthy and heart and, you know, he looked great. And actually, another thing that had surprised me, as much as he was running around for five days, he was healthy. Hyde was great. He wasn't dehydrated. He wasn't emaciated. I mean, healthy, healthy, uh, about 125 pound bear. But so we put him in the trap, did the interviews. The best part was watching the kids come up. You know, we, we let, it was funny because we're sitting there, you know, we're, we're letting the kids, you know, touch and pet and everything. And, you know, the drug's starting to wear off a little bit. And he's kind of, and we're like, oh, we're like, well, we need to end this right now. <laughs> you know. Is that like, when I, I saw that transpire and I was allowed, I went up and took a photo with it myself. Is that like standard procedure to let the public see, you know, or is that like. I mean, there's nothing standard about it because it doesn't happen that often. Yeah. So I think every, you know, with the news <laughs> camera, it's not like, yeah, I thought maybe yeah. if you're doing a grizzly bear out in, out in, uh, you know, uh, Yellowstone, like, no I, I would say no. It, you know, but, yeah. But yeah. it was such a neat thing. And he would, well, we had got two and a half darts in him, which one dart does about a 200 pound bear. 
So we he's he's had twice the amount just because, like I said, the adrenaline. And when it finally, you know, so he was out. You know, I mean, we we carried him up, and there was not a flinch or a movement. So where did they take him? We took they took him up to I'm sorry, uh, State Game Lands mm -hmm. up on the Schuylkill. Berks County line near Hawk Mountain. Was it 106? Well, 106? Wait, what's that? 106? <laughs> well, there I go looking for It's that. Schuylkill and Berks County. Yeah. What's the big it's, one up it's there? It's basically, it's, it's uh, I, I should have looked the number up. Two, fifth, don't hold me. To I that. think, no, but it, it's, it's, it's Blue Mountain Ridge, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where we took them. So if you think mm -hmm. of the, if you, it, it, I don't know how well you know Pennsylvania, but if you think of, yep. um, in Pennsylvania, you got sort of the, the, the Blue Mountain and the Alleghen, plain, yep, yep. Then you have Piedmont. Um, kind of rolling hills and that kind of thing. And then there's a ridge line that's kind of like marks the beginning of the mountains. And it yeah. arcs around from like north um, and then arcs uh, west, southwest until yeah. it hits the Maryland Virginia, line. Yeah, comes down. Yep. Um, yep. And so that's the blue blue yeah. ridge. It's right like, where those mountains started, where right. we let them go. It's yeah. like a 200-mile-long mountain. So, yeah. and, it, and people, you know, I, I put, put it on our social media and my personal Instagram, Facebook, and people, and people I like and respect, and I feel like should know better are like, like, uh, re talk about relocating it. And I think people get too diehard about things. Like, that bear is not going to have a good life. It was he only, <laughs> there was a, no, he was he, only no, 1,900 no, no, acres. No, 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 no. no. It's 1,900 yeah. acres, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a million people visited a year. You no, know, they, like, no. Bear, bear's home ranges are too big. He's too big. You know, uh, he, and he was not a vicious, ferocious bear, but it's a bear. Yeah. It's a bear, you yeah. know. This is a very densely populated yeah. area. And yeah. it wasn't, you know, it wasn't even in a I mean, it was only in a briefly. It was in mm -hmm. a, dumpsters of apartment complexes. Yep. Yep. You know, like on, on Henry Avenue, which is essentially, you know, Philly's an old city. It's, it's, yep. we, we still have like highways that are yeah. at street level, you know. Yeah. In the, in, in, in Just the for city. safety for him and the, everyone above he needed to go up into the big woods. I mean, yeah. that's, you know. No, I'm not and is he going to run into a few territories of other males? Sure. But he'll, he'll, he'll jockey it around. And... In a natural setting, every other yeah. every other um, evicted bear faces that same reality. Yep. They move around. Yeah. Just, you know, the big bear, big big males don't like to climb trees that much. So that little guy can get higher than the big bear. It's I mean, then he goes away, he goes out, he knows I got to get it. There's a process that keeps everybody you know mostly on the up and up in, in the bear yeah. world plus now i can go to cabela's you were saying that you like i have a bird list of that i want to see in philadelphia you have a mammal list uh, yeah that, it's just you know all the outdoors stuff that i do in philadelphia is i just get the biggest thrill of seeing animals I've seen multiple mink. I've watched uh, weasel hunting chipmunks for an hour. I mean, just, and you're sitting there, you're thinking, you know, how many million people are in the Philadelphia area? I'm the only one observing this right now. I just think that's cool stuff. Yeah. But I've been where watching coyotes. The, where do you see the weasels? Uh, um, anywhere along the Wissick and Crick. Uh, okay. But I was uh, trying to pull a video up. I know there's a mink den, oh. and I watch a mink. He comes out. I watch him all the time. He Have is so cool. Have you ever seen a star-nosed mole? In, I mean, I've seen them dead. I've seen a bunch of them dead. dead. No. Where do you seem to? I've, like around the green? Hines? Oh, okay. Maybe, um, I've definitely seen them on Hines. I've seen them I mean, it, it's a, Penny Pack. It definitely Penny Pack. Yep. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Star-nosed. It's, just, it's yep, one of the yep. weirdest looking creatures. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they are, yeah. They have like a star-shaped set of, what do you call them? Like? They look feelers like or tubers. I don't know what the science is. They look like tentacles. Yeah. It looks like you got a starfish attached to the nose of a mole. It's just crazy looking thing. Yeah. Grubs and worms. They but eat, yeah. but mink are, I, I've seen them. I've seen minks in like Chester County, mm -hmm. but not here in yep. Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah. I'm never. You know, I've never seen a mink like south of Canada. I've seen them in Canada, and I've seen them in. Uh, yeah. I've seen them in uh, Alaska. I was looking for spotted turtles, and I was in a, a marsh, and I just saw the mink. I just I heard something moving, and it. I was like, it's not a snake, it's not a turtle, what the hell is it? And then, like, I, I see it, and it just took a minute to register, because I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting it. Um, I was like, it's a, it's a, it's a mink, holy cow. <laughs> well, what's, what are your wants? What yeah, are what some do you big wants? Want oh, uh, uh, just knocked off the list a few years back, um, and I know they're here and are common, flying squirrels. Oh, I had a fun, 
Yeah, we, I was actually in a deer stand, and I, it was it was dark, and I'm sitting there, and something hit the tree right above my head. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow. So I took the flashlight out, and there he was, you know, just looking at me. I thought that was really cool. I, a few years ago, I baited a tree with peanut butter for a few weeks um, in Cobbs Creek, uh, and then finally we came back at night, and we were able to see uh, a, a flying squirrel there. Yeah, they yeah. should be everywhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, they're very common, but yeah, they're just but so they're not, yeah, they're nocturnal. nocturnal. <laughs> yeah. you, you hear them at night a lot. Mm -hmm. Most people are, you know, if you hear what it sounds like a bird at night, it's pretty oh, most likely yeah, it's yeah. a flying squirrel. Yeah. But and tell my, people about it and no one believes yeah. that they're even here. Oh, yeah. yeah and keep yeah. in mind, if if it sounds like I'm explaining something to you that you already know, it's because I'm talking to the listeners and not no, you. No, yeah, no. But yeah, <laughs> not taking it personal. Flying squirrels are extremely <laughs> abundant. Like, yeah. they're, they're, yeah. and they're, they're just. They're cool. They're I mean, really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they glide. Yeah. They got, like, yeah. they're not wings. There's a special term for the membrane they that I forget. But they, their eyes a little bigger than their, you know, the, yeah. Yeah, disproportionate to their head. They're just well, they're, really, they're, they're sharp. Cool. Also. Yeah, yeah. 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 Back in the day, I, uh, I dated um, a, um, like, a environmental, well, I dated a few environmental activists in my day, but I dated <laughs> someone who was a tree sitter out in Oregon. And, uh, uh, they have a different species there, don't they? I think there's a northern. Yeah, it's more a, of a coniferous yeah. specialist. Yeah. And it, she said that they would, like, nestle into her neck like, <laughs> while you're sitting on the tree stand. <laughs> Um, but what have what are what are things outstanding on your list that you want to see in Philadelphia? Um, I, I, well, the bear was icing on the cake. You know, yeah. I didn't see the one that was here two years ago. You know, I never thought I would see that, but that was great. Uh, I mean, I've seen fox. I gray oh, fox. I did see one gray, and really? this is probably eighteen twenty years ago. But this was a debate among Philly yeah. National yep. Center circles yep. about this. Yeah, yeah. So we're hundred percent. I saw it uh, in the center, the Nature Center. Uh, okay. Um, He's straight to the Schuylkill Center. Schuylkill Center. So the Schuylkill Center is the largest yep. piece of privately owned land in Philadelphia. Really? Yeah, and it's mm. two blocks from my house. It makes it. It's like so. It's wooded, uh, some ponds, nature mm -hmm. center. Yeah. And what made made me know it was the gray was I saw it long enough that it wasn't a dark phase red or whatnot. Yeah. But he went up a tree. It was a you know. He was way up, you know, because they do tend yeah, to climb. They yeah, they climb, yeah. Yep. And I watched. I wish I had, didn't have a cat. Back then, we didn't have phones. But yeah. But as I, see, I saw one. That's all. So many times of people, when they say they see gray squirrel, say they see, oh, gray, sorry, gray squirrel, gray fox, say the same thing, that it's one of the most beautiful animals they've ever seen. They're gorgeous. Oh, they're, yeah. yeah. I saw one dead on the, the road. The silvery slate gray. Atlanta, and even then, it was beautiful. It's, yeah. it's technically mm -hmm. a separate species, but if you want to see an an identical animal to a gray uh, fox, you go to the Channel Islands, and it's very easy to you can Santa Cruz Island. Oh, but they're endangered out there. Because yeah, of this, yeah. But apparently, it's uh, um, it's introduced, right? No, no, no. no, no. They, that, no that's not. There's a there's a um, endemic species of gray fox that lives on on Santa Cruz Island. But it has and, no fear of people. Yeah, and so people, right. uh, yeah. and you just. I did listen to a podcast about those. And but they're having, that was a very crazy. I think they were having a problem um, where DDT killed off the golden I mean, killed the off bird, the, yeah. the bald eagles that lived in that area on the islands, and and bald eagles are very territorial, and they kicked they kept out golden eagles, uh. right? And so golden eagles colonized the islands. In the absence of the bald eagles, oh. and the golden eagles are hammering the the, the fox. The fox. That's yeah. fascinating. Golden and eagles are a much more aggressive bird than a bald eagle. It's They're, weird yeah. in terms yeah. of like they they have like they like to attack bigger prey. Yeah. But in terms of like fighting each other, yep. the bald will kick a golden yeah. ass. Apparently, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you see the videos where a golden takes a wild sheep off the top of the mountain. You know, it's a lamb or something, but still. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> But it's it's weird. People, a lot of people, will say like, "Oh, bald eagles are scavengers," and mostly they don't take. But when when I when you work in like places where there's bald eagles, they're and still they're such huge every, talents, everything such huge bills. I mean, like hates them. I in in the Canadian Arctic, I witnessed a bald eagle being at the same time, like not like over the course of field season, one individual bald eagle was being at, mobbed by a harrier, <laughs> raven, parasitic everything. Jaeger. Yeah. Like well, we all saw, at once. Not quite that dramatic, but we were when we did that bicycle uh, nature of tour thing in the in the, in the Taconi, we ended up at uh, Plastic Park on the Delaware, 
and sort of it was a nice icing on the cake for people who were with us, but we saw a bald eagle coming over the Delaware, first being pursued by Osprey, and then like once it got over like over into North Philly, red tail hawks picked it up and started <laughs> Just harassing cat, it also. Yeah. Yeah. There's like two different species of birds right there trying to get the bald There's eagle. There's nothing like watching a bald eagle soar. It's yeah. one of my yeah. favorite birds. I, yeah. The sure. golden is, you know, I'll hear, uh, to our listeners who live in the west of the U.S., they see golden eagles much more frequently than we see balds. Out here, we get all excited. I mean, I, I go every year. I, I It's like a pilgrimage to sit on a mountain top in November to see the golden eagles migrate past because they're just yeah. so. And that, oh, that's my bird. In Philadelphia, Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle. And uh, one day, Dan got one from Houston Meadow. And had I been living at this house then, I could have probably walked out back and had a fly over. Golden Eagle in Philly is my number one. Well, there you go. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't have anything else. For me, I'm like I, honestly, for Philadelphia, I'm not sure if I have anything else. I mean, I'm going to keep trying to find black rat snakes. Queen so snake. <laughs> Queen snake. Copperhead. They're not. Neither is here. Or are they? Just saying. <laughs> Um, queen snake, I am. Copperhead, I'm darn sure they're not here. Um, I would have heard about it. Uh, queen snakes are something that people would confuse with garters and water snakes, possibly. So, so copperheads, you know what copperheads are. They're, they're venomous. Um, they're pit vipers. They look like their, their pattern camouflages well with, with dead leaves. Um, and they're in... Probably historically, they probably were here, but I don't know. But but they're currently they you'll see them around Valley Forge, you'll see them in Upper Bucks County, so surrounding counties around Philadelphia, the like, but not right up against Philadelphia. And they're one of the most beautifully marked snakes. Gorgeous. Um, and then queen snakes are probably in a lot of ways more interesting. They're a water snake, and this genus of water snakes um, that they're part of specializes in eating crayfish. And so queen snakes specialize not just crayfish but eating freshly molted crayfish so that they're not they don't have so crayfish will molt their shells yeah and so for like a few a soft hours crab. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly mm -hmm. they're like a soft shell crab they're vulnerable when they don't have their their, their shell hasn't hardened yet um, and so this is a snake that basically specializes in finding the freshly molted crayfish and eating those wow. so you have to have a pretty healthy so it's a semi-aquatic snake it must yeah, it's like a water, like a water, water, water snake. snake. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. And, and, they, and you'll see them under rocks next to a creek mm -hmm. like you do water snakes. You'll see them basking in bushes next to creeks like water snakes do. Um, and, uh, and, but you need to have like a, a healthy creek with healthy crayfish population right. Right, right. Um, to support the queen snakes. And so the, I, you, I don't know if the creeks in Philadelphia have good crayfish populations. They used to when I was a kid. No, I don't oh, know if that changed. Yeah. yeah. What about because I used to go looking for them. Now I'm, I don't look for them now, but it, yeah, it could know. be the same. So I used to fill fish tanks up with them. I thought that was cool. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked to find a queen yeah. snake, but it would be really neat. You're right. Yeah, we're gonna have Brad back because he's involved in urban deer management and, and urban hunting. I mean, he and hunts. It's something that you just don't think of happening in a city, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that so I would like to explore in a full Absolutely. by itself. Yep. I'd be glad to come back. Thanks for listening to the Urban Wildlife Podcast. We want to thank Brad especially for coming on and joining You're us. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it too, um, then please rate us highly on your podcast listening app of choice. Please hit us up on Twitter or WildlifeCast and email us at urbanwildlifecast at gmail.com. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.